Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to Mad Medicine. Put on your crazy boots because today we're going to be talking about psychosis. Now, if you guys don't know already, we have a psychiatry playlist on our channel right here. So you can go ahead and check it out. It contains everything you need for the USMLE Step 1 psych portion. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys like what we're doing. And let's begin. Let's talk about psychosis. So psychosis is a condition where patients have a disordered perception of reality. That is very, very important. They're, uh, they're not intact. The reality perception is not intact. It's distorted. And it's characterized by three main things. And these characterizations are pretty high yield because they're going to set the groundwork for uh, other conditions like, let's say, uh, schizophrenia or delirium. So there are three main things you need to know that happen in psychosis, three main hallmark conditions. And the first one is going to be delusions. Patients are going to be delusional when they are psychotic. They're going to have disorganized thought or speech. They're not going to be talking or thinking clearly. And they're also going to have hallucinations, and that's very important. So in psychosis, patients are also going to have a loss of perception with reality. They're not going to be thinking straight. In, demen sorry, in delirium, patients have reality intact they understand what's real and what isn't they're just not able to speak too clearly but in psychosis uh, they don't realize what's real they have delusions hallucinations happening so their perception of reality gets disordered and at the same time this can happen to patients who have medical illnesses or psychiatric illnesses such as delirium and or schizophrenia so that's basically all the background stuff you need to know about psychosis. In this video, we're going to be discussing these three uh, characterizations of psychosis or manifestations of psychosis. So let's start off with the very first manifestation, which is going to be delusions. Uh, delusions are false, uh, unique beliefs that patients have that they believe are fact that they believe are real. And you got to understand, one thing to, uh, to know is that these delusions are not going to be typical of a patient's culture or their religion. It's not something that's normal for their culture to be in. Some people might just be kind of weird, right? They just have weird beliefs that we, that we may find as weird. Um, these are not a part of their beliefs normally. These are things that they have come up with. So, I wanted to just put this little gif right here of Bernie Sanders saying it's all delusional. Um, yep, that's about it. So there are six main types of delusions a patient could have, and they're going to be right here. So they can have persecutory, pers persecutory, whatever, uh, grandiose delusions, ero erotomaniac delusions, somatic delusions, delusions of reference, and delusions of control. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about these just so you guys have a better understanding of what these uh, uh main types are. So in perse persecutory delusions, uh, patients are going to think that aliens are communicating with them, right? They think that someone is talking to them directly. In grandiose delusions, we got make America great again. Uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty grandiose, and we're just going to leave it at that. But, you know, uh, he does not think it's it's a, a delusion. Anyways, next type is erotomaniac delusions, like Kanye West, right? Kanye West loves uh, himself more than himself. So that's just how he is, right? This is a, a delusion. If someone says to you, Kanye West likes me more than he likes himself, yeah, they're, they're probably delusional right there. Somatic delusions are when patients say there's an alien inside of me, right? Uh, that doesn't make any sense as far as what's happening. Delusions of reference is when they refer to something external affecting them, like a TV talking only to me. The person, the, the newscaster is talking directly to me through the TV. And then finally, you have delusions of control where patients state that they are losing their mind. Uh, sorry, that the government is controlling their mind. Now, one thing I do want to say is that there is a disorder called the delusional disorder. This is pretty high yield, and I would also take some time to make sure that uh, you remember this. In delusional disorder, a patient is going to have a fixed, persistent, false belief uh, system that lasts greater than one month. I know we guys have talked about this, but when every time we talk about diagnoses, the time frame is really important when it comes to step one. So delusional disorder has to be greater than one month. They must have these delusions for one month. 
month. And the function otherwise is not uh, um, restricted. Patients are able to do everything they can do. They just have this uh, obscure or random delusion. And there's a very cool phenomenon called, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this, maybe it's called Fouad de Dux. I have no idea. But in this phenomenon, what ends up happening is that the delusional person, the patient uh, uh, suffering from delusional disorder, actually convinces their friend or a close family member or their spouse or partner that the delusion is real. And they both start having this delusion. And it's it's very rare, but it's I thought it was pretty cool. And I was like, you know what? Let's just mention it when I heard about it. So that's delusions overall. Um, and uh, there's nothing more to it. I think this is the most high yield portion after understanding what delusions are by themselves. So let's go and let's talk about disorganized thought. Uh, disorganized thought is usually seen in speech patterns um, in which a patient may have incoherent speech patterns with words that make no sense. They might just jumble blah, 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 blah randomly. Uh, they may be pervasive where they repeat the same word or idea over and over and over again. And this is also going to be something like dis uh, disorganized thinking. So I'm just going to write that out for you this organized thinking as well okay this is another example they can also have something called clanging where a patient uses words that rhyme like the cat hit the mat uh, with the bat and that's all they, that's how they talk right I'm not a rapper so I wouldn't know how to do that uh, there's another thing called elego sorry there's another thing called uh, elegoli elogia which is speech poverty they just don't speak properly uh, it's like the episode from the office when Kevin says you know he's gonna cut out words so they say he says something like me like Apple he just doesn't speak properly it's speech poverty uh, just a random reference for those of you guys who are office fans shout out to you guys uh, another thing that patients could have is a loosening of association. So ideas that they're talking about do not uh, follow each other. They're not really connected. So it could be something like this. So yesterday I was walking down the street and the fire hydrant in the sky had some leaves that were creamy and the peanut butter was made out of coffee. Like that makes no sense, right? That's disorganized thought and speech at the same time. Patients can also have something called tangential thinking, where they diverge from one topic and discuss another one altogether. So an example of that would be, uh, okay, so yesterday we were, we were working out. And uh, while I was working out, by the way, I just wanted to tell you that I ate some random food uh, and my stomach has been hurting. And the book I read yesterday made no sense because it was saying that Martin Luther King Jr. was uh, you know, a horrible man, but he was amazing. Right, so that type of thinking shows you tangential thinking. They're not really jumping from topic to topic right away like they are in loosening of association. In tangential thinking, they talk about one topic, and before they finish their conversation or their train of thought, they move on to the next topic. And then finally, there's also something called thought blocking, in which a patient suddenly stops. All right, so I hope that made uh, good sense for you guys when it comes to disorganized thought. Let's talk about hallucinations, which is the last uh, uh, you know, portion of, of psychosis. In hallucinations, a patient's perception is you know, not really there to an external stimuli. They might see things that aren't happening. Hallucinations are pretty much that. Now, these, these perceptions can be uh, uh, sensory without... These sensory perceptions are usually without external stimuli, sorry. So it's not like they are uh, just happening by themselves is more so internal. Now this can also be caused by substance abuse. So like if someone's taking LSD, they're probably gonna hallucinate because that's what LSD does. And there are, sev there are seven different types of hallucinations uh, that you should definitely know. Most of them are pretty straightforward. Just so you guys get you know a, a better understanding, we're gonna talk about them really quickly. But uh, it's not too difficult to grasp the type of hallucinations that are out there. And that's what I wrote right here. So now let's go ahead and let's talk about these seven types. And once we are done with that, that's it. That's all you need to know for psychosis. So when it comes to hallucinations, the very first and most common type is going to be a visual hallucination. This is commonly uh, a form of medical illness, like intoxication, or uh, let's say they just got out of surgery and they're a little psychotic. It's probably because of the drug intoxication. Or if they're taking LSD, right, they're going to have visual hallucinations. So that's usually what it is. And this is kind of what it looks like right here. 
All right, the next type is going to be auditory hallucinations, which is a feature of psychiatric illness like schizophrenia. Schizophrenics might say, oh, so the, the voices in my head are telling me to do this, this, and that, right? That's auditory. That's more of a psychiatric illness. Olfactory, oh, yeah, like this right here. Like Dwight, my man Dwight right here probably has, a, <laughs> probably has schizophrenia. Uh, olfactory illness occurs as an aura of the temporal lobe el epilepsy. That's usually what it is, and the patients are going to end up smelling something. This is indicative of temporal lobe el uh, epilepsy as well as some brain tumors. Gustatory, oh yeah, I, I forget what gifts I put, but this right here, can you smell what the rock is cooking? Uh, if you can, you probably are having an olfactory hallucination because he's definitely not cooking shit. All right, so then fine, uh, in this video, sorry, in the, the last thing in this side deck is going to be gustatory uh, uh, hallucinations where a patient tastes something. This is very rare, rare, but this can also be seen in epilepsy, right? So we got a, a clip from Scrubs right here. Look at that. He's licking his tongue. He's probably tasting some Nutella. So the next set of hallucinations are called tactile hallucinations, which are common in alcohol withdrawal and stimulant use. Patients might say, oh, my God, I'm having, like, you know, things are crawling all over me. Uh, the cocaine crawlies, as they're, as they're called, right? That's a tactile hallucination that's happening. It's not normal. So if someone is, you know, doing that coke, mm, you definitely know they're going to have some hallucinations. Hypo, uh, hypnagogic hallucinations occur when a patient is going to sleep, sometimes seen in narcolepsy, and hypnopompic hallucinations occur when a patient is walking, uh, occurs while walking from sleep. Now, uh, sorry, when while waking from sleep. So that's usually what ends up happening. These are the seven types of hallucinations that you should know. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching our video on hallucinations. This is a dense one, so I highly recommend you guys go through this video one more time and go through all the different types of delusions and hallucinations uh, so you know them a lot better and have a better understanding of what's happening. For the step one, you may be tested on these types of hallucinations and delusions. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And when you do, hit that little bell notification that occurs right on the side so you guys can get notified every time we post a new video. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.